Hello and welcome to another episode of Maker Melissa's Lab. In a previous video I had assembled this Altair Duino computer here and I had a lot of fun doing that. Shortly after I had released the video for this, I received a package. And in that package, there was a note, and it says, Melissa, thanks for the video with my Altair Duino kit. Here's another one of my kits you might have fun with. Chris, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate this. I have the Micro Kenback One kit here. And I wanted to go ahead and make another video with me assembling this. Chris Davis is the creator of the Altair Duino and the Micro Kinback One here. And uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there, his website is Add Water and Stir, spelled with one D on Add. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description. And you can go ahead and check out the kits. They're really fun. So I'm actually really excited to put this together, so let's get started. Hmm. It has all the parts on here. Okay, I've gone ahead and looked up the instructions, and now I'm going to go ahead and just go and solder all these resistors on. I went ahead and put the 2.2K and the 470 ohm resistors on first, followed by the 10K resistors. And next up is going to be the LEDs. Now to do those, you put the four yellow ones on this side of the board, and these ones are white here, but I imagine they're red when they actually light up. But Perhaps there's some other color, we'll find out. To put the LEDs on, just make sure the flat side is up and the long side is down, and you should be good. I've already checked and these LEDs are all consistent, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, my microphone battery died at this point, and I didn't realize it until the very end. So I will be describing what was going on after the fact. So I soldered the 12 LEDs so that they ended up flush against the board. Next up are the buttons. I soldered the sockets to the reverse side of the board. You'll want to make sure the notches line up with the lettering and the notch on the diagram on the board here. The instructions mention a 4-pin male header is required to be installed in this step, but you can actually disregard that. I soldered the 7805 voltage regulator next, followed by two capacitors. The orientation of the smaller capacitor doesn't matter so much, but with the larger one you'll want to make sure the negative is closer to the voltage regulator over here. The next part I soldered in is the 16 MHz crystal. If I notice the crystal isn't laying completely flat, I'll take my soldering iron and heat up both of the leads while pushing down with my finger until it rests flat on the board. Now it's time to place the chips in their sockets. The notches should line up with the notches on the dip sockets, unless you install the dip sockets the wrong direction. Next, I took the AC adapter socket and placed it into the case and put the nut onto it. I finished by tightening it up with pliers. For the real-time clock module, or RTC, I needed to use the pliers to straighten the four rightmost pins. I placed the RTC into the board and soldered all of the straightened pins. I then reheated the pins to make sure the RTC was not at an angle. It should not be mounted flush against the board but should be raised up a little bit to avoid any shorts between the two boards. Install a battery into the real-time clock module. Next I took the small piece of wire, stripped it, and soldered it between the socket and the board. I think the wire comes in random colors. I used the yellow for the V plus and the orange for the ground. Be sure the wire polarity is correct. The V plus side is the connector with the flat part and the ground is opposite of the cutout notch. The third connector is unused. The next part to assemble is the screws and adding the buttons to the front panel. Next I peeled off the protective film from the front panel. 
I used my fingernail to peel off all the little bits inside the letters and numbers like 0, 8, 4, D, and R, as well as the bordered areas with the smaller numbers. Next I placed all six screws into the front panel. I carefully laid the panel onto its front side and placed the spacers onto the screws. I placed the board on top of the screws making sure that the buttons and LEDs were facing towards the front panel in the right direction. I screwed the nylon post onto the screws but I left it just barely tight so it didn't cause the front side here to pucker. I noticed on the case that I got that the holes were quite small to begin with so I used a knife to kind of go through and enlarge each of the holes initially. I used a 3mm drill bit to get the holes to their final size but a 1 8 inch drill bit would have worked as well. I placed the entire assembly into the blue plastic case being sure to coil up the wire inside. I tightened the nylon nuts onto the back to secure the entire thing into place. I finished up by placing the button caps onto the buttons. It ended up with four black buttons, four white buttons, and then alternating colored buttons starting from a black one. So when you go ahead and you take this and plug it in, it goes in and runs a little bit of a self-test here. So the Micro Kinback one only has 256 bytes of memory and I'm going to go over each button here. First we have the 8 bits that we can use for either entering addresses or we can use it for entering data. Pressing each button will toggle the value either on or off. The clear button will clear the current input. So if I have something like that, I can hit clear and it'll clear the current input. The display will display the current address that the internal address counter is at. So if I hit display, nothing lights up, which means we're at zero at the moment. The set button will actually set the address to the current input. So if I wanted to go to address 100 or 4, then I would hit that and then I can hit set. And then if I wanted to see what was in memory, I would just go ahead and hit the read button. In this case, it has no value at address 4. The store button is the opposite of the read and it'll write the data to the current address. Now when you do the read or the store, it'll actually increment the current address by one. So right now, if I hit display, it says we are at address five. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to zero and then I'm going to hit set. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enter a value of all ones on the lower register here, or the lower four bits rather. And we're gonna go ahead and hit store. Now we have incremented to address one and we can verify that by hitting the display button and we are at one in binary. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and hit that. We're still at address one. We're gonna go ahead and hit store. Now we're at address two. What we can do is clear the current input, we're at zero. We want to set zero as the current address. And then if we hit read, it shows at zero we have all those and I can hit read again. And now at address one, which is what I had stored, we have all these values. I'm not familiar with the actual instruction codes for the micro Kinback one. So I can't write any programs without some data sheets in front of me or instruction manuals. The start button will start the program from the very beginning and the stop button will halt the current program. It will keep running until it either hits a halt command or it, the stop button is pressed. You can actually press the start and stop buttons at the same time if you'd like to run the programs one step at a time.
Now the Micro Kinback one comes with a few loaded programs and I'm going to show you a couple of them on here. I'm going to go ahead and start by loading program number three and hitting start. And what this is, this is a binary coded decimal clock and what it'll do is it'll switch from hour to minute to hour to minute and it'll show the seconds blinking over here. I've gone ahead and programmed the real-time clock module off camera so the time is actually pretty accurate on there. It might be off by like 45 seconds or something like that because it only have a resolution up to the minute. And then the other program I'd like to show you is located at memory location 5. So I'll hit stop and 5. And then I'll go ahead and hit start. And this one is called DOS Blinkin' Lights. And what it is is just a bunch of blinky lights. And this one's actually my favorite because it's just really fun to look at. It looks like one of those old time computers like it's processing or something along those lines. Actually, technically it is processing, so that works. I had mentioned that the MicroKinBack one has 256 bytes of memory, but actually a bunch of those are special locations, and some of them are registers, because this doesn't actually have any built-in registers, and some of them are inputs and outputs. So I know the Octal 377 is the input that's the equivalent to hexadecimal FF, if you're more familiar with the hexadecimal numbering system. And I'm not sure what the output is, but I'm sure that's what you use to uh, set any of these lights. You can find out more information about how to program the MicroKinBack 1 at Add Water and Stir. And you can also purchase one of these from AddWaterAndStir.com or you can go ahead and go to Tendi.com and I can go ahead and link that in the description as well. And you can purchase it off of there if it is more convenient for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanted to thank Chris again for the kit. I had a lot of fun building it. And go ahead and hit like if you like this video and subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see everyone in my next video.